I am Hank Weimersch and I'm with the Department of Signals and Systems at Chalmers University. Welcome to part two on this presentation on cooperative positioning. Now that we understand factor graphs in the sum product algorithm, we can move on and understand SPAWN, the sum product algorithm on a wireless network. Rather than providing a full derivation, we consider the most simple non-trivial case, that is two-dimensional positioning of two agents. For this scenario, every agent can only communicate with two anchors. It is clear that without cooperation, both agents have an ambiguity. We apply the factor graph framework and start from the joint posterior distribution of every node given all of the measurements. We can factorize this distribution. Don't worry too much about the math right now. The important thing is that from this factorization we can draw the factor graph. First we draw the variable vertices corresponding to the positions of every node. Then in pink we have the a priori distribution of every node. For the agents this distribution could be uniform. For the anchors they could be direct delta functions. Then the yellow vertices correspond to likelihood functions related to measurements between agents and anchors. The red and green vertex correspond to likelihood functions related to measurements between agents. Now that we have the factor graph, we can execute the sum product algorithm. However, we would like the network to, to perform the sum product algorithm. To that end, we map the factor graph onto the network as follows. With every device, we associate a subgraph and the factor graph. Every subgraph is a tree, and subgraphs are non-overlapping. This implies that messages are either within a subgraph, that means within a node, or between subgraphs, between nodes. The latter types of messages are sent as packets over the air interface. The resulting algorithm we call SPAWN. Now let us return to our example and see actually what happens. This is the network topology. Agent 2 can communicate with two anchors. Every anchor broadcasts its position. Based on the distance estimate, the agent knows it is on a circular distribution around every anchor. The thickness of the distribution depends on the ranging technology. The agent can combine this information based on spawn and has a resulting distribution shown as a contour plot on the right. Clearly the agent has an ambiguity. Because of symmetry, agent 4 is in a similar situation. However, agent 4 can now send its distribution to agent 2. Here we see what happens. Agent 2 ranges with agent 4, so he figures out the distance. Based on that distance estimate, agent 2 knows it must be in a distribution that has this infinity shape. It is really two circular distributions with centers where the distribution of agent 4 has mass. Agent 2 again fuses the information using spawn and can now unambiguously localize itself. And of course the same is true for agent 4. To appreciate the distributed nature of spawn, we can see that the factor graph is spanning both space and time. So this is the network topology as it varies over time with nodes entering and leaving the network. And this is the corresponding factor graph. So the factor graph is, can be very, very large, spanning space and time. However, every node in the network only needs to know its local part of the factor graph. As nodes enter and leave the network, every node's local factor graph can grow or shrink correspondingly, giving rise to a large organic factor graph. We now move on to some simulations. We consider this network in a 100 by 100 meter environment with 100 agents in blue and 13 anchors in red. Every node can communicate and range to devices within 20 meters, as shown by this circle. Without cooperation, when the agents use only information from anchors, we now show the positioning performance. Let us focus on a specific agent, shown in the dark circle. In blue is where the agent, actu where the agent actually is. In green is its MMSE estimate, so the, the mean of its belief. The line connecting the two is the localization error. The gray disk represents the broadness of its belief. So even though the agent has a very poor estimate, at least it knows it is uncertain. That's a much better situation than being very confident but wrong. After one iteration of spawn, already many agents in the inside of the network have good position estimates, with small errors and very tight beliefs. After four iterations, 99% of the agents are well localized. Only one agent is still in trouble. The reason is that he does not have enough friends around him, so that no algorithm can find an unambiguous estimates. Inspired by positive simulation result, we, impl we implemented a small-scale testbed using time domain P2 
ultra-wideband radios. This network testbed was developed in the Laboratory for Information Decision Systems at MIT. Our setup involved four anchors and two mobile agents in cooperation. We developed a graphical user interface and a communication protocol stack. The GUI on the right shows the position of one agent as well as the position of the peer agent. This demo of Bayesian cooperative ultra-wideband positioning was completed on April 1, 2009 and is the first in its kind to the best of our knowledge. To obtain quantitative results, we performed a number of measurements, placing one of the agents on 71 discrete points on the floor, while the other agent remained static. This movie shows a quick dry run of the measurement process. The actual measurements took about 5 hours. The measurements yielded the following results. First of all, we can show that cooperation increases coverage, so that means the region where you could be localized. Secondly, we show that cooperation uh, yields increased accuracy. In our scenario, based on the 71 data points, we found that without cooperation, 90% of the measurements had an error exceeding 1 meter. With cooperation, only 10% had an error exceeding 1 meter. In conclusion, we found the following. First of all, position information is important for a number of applications. And that cooperation can provide coverage and accuracy improvements in GPS challenge environments. We've also proposed a powerful distributed cooperative positioning algorithm with proven performance. This algorithm is called SPAWN. Based on our testbed implementation, we have identified the following future research topics. First of all, latency making sure Spawn provides position estimates quickly and reliably. Secondly, convergence. Spawn is based on loopy belief propagation and suffers the same convergence issues that are faced, for instance, in LDPC decoding. Finally, we want to improve the robustness of Spawn, for instance, in non-line of sight propagation. Finally, these are some links to some of the background reading if you are interested in more details. And below are pictures of everyone who was involved in the team to develop Spawn, and also the testbed implementation. This ends this presentation. Thank you for your time.